everybody. Welcome to the Get Wealth Podcast. My name is Brennan Wiersma. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Today, I'm here with Michael Barayev, entrepreneur, uh, mindset coach, uh, salesperson, business owner, you name it. The list goes on. Uh, excited to talk to you today, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it, man. So yeah, I guess uh, j- jumping right into it here, you have had quite the experience with um, as far as starting a business and you have all these things going on. So I'd really like to get into talking about all that stuff. But I guess first off, where, where did you start? Have you always been this prolific entrepreneur with, you know, all these businesses uh, and stuff? Nah, man. I mean, if, if you would have met me at 18, 19 years old, you would have said this guy is going to end up in jail dead or hanging off a cliff somewhere, right? So a little bit of my background, my parents immigrated from, you know, USSR, former, you know, former USSR. I came here when I was six months old to New York City. Uh, I'm in Miami now, but I grew up my whole life in New York City. And, you know, I I was not the kind of kid that you would want to actually have as a child because, you know, I got kicked out of eight schools. I was a crazy kid. My parents went through a divorce. I went through foster care. I mean, I had a whole nightmare kind of going on from zero to 19. So I was not the entrepreneurial kind of guy. I did have an entrepreneurial spirit because I hated being, you know, being out of control. And I like to, you know, be in control of my own destiny, my own life. And when I had, you know, a couple of dollars in my pocket, I'm like, wait a minute, if I have a couple of dollars, I can get what I want. Because I hated the word no. I hated the rejection. If I asked my mom for something, she was like, oh, we can't afford it, you know. And my parents grew up very, very poor. We grew up on $12,000 a year. In today's income, it's about $18,000 a year to feed a family of five. So I never had my own room. I lived in the living room my entire life. Like we were just busted, bro. Like I remember my dad used to call because I used to go to private school. My dad used to call all these charities and programs all day, five days a week. That was his job to get us enough money to put me through private school and my brother. So, I mean, thinking about that, I just said, I, I just, I have to be in control of my life. I have to put myself in a position to win. And that's where the entrepreneurial mindset kicked in. I didn't know how, I didn't know what I was going to do, but at 19, I was confused. I was lost in the sauce. And I ended up starting, you know, a, a network marketing business. And I don't know if I should keep going, but. Um, yeah, that, that sounds like quite the shift. Do you think that um, that's a common theme for people that are ultra successful? They tend to come from these backgrounds where, you know, there's so much adversity, whereas someone who grows up, you know, they're not necessarily going to be set up for failure, but, you know, they kind of just go through school and jump through the hoops as opposed to, you know, having to yeah, do all that. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong, you know, with. With the, I mean, there's different types of successful people out there. There's successful people that have had a great, average, mediocre, Mickey Mouse life. And then you have people like me or someone else that literally went through hell uh, and they had to create some success. Now, in my opinion, if I'm going to bet on somebody, this doesn't mean that if you don't have a crazy childhood or a crazy upbringing, you're not going to become successful. But I'm the kind of guy I want to bet on someone that's been through pain because entrepreneurship is about who can hold the pain and handle the pain the longest. Because if you can hold the pain, you can literally succeed. And it's all about going through the pain, going through the turmoil, going through the rejection, going through the nose, going through the disappointments, the defeat, and, and temporary defeat, like you read in Think and Grow Rich. It's not about you know, you know, defeat as a whole, but little failures that kind of make most people say, you know what, I'm done. You know, And for a guy like me or a guy like yourself who wants to be successful, who wants to build a huge company, I mean, you're going to have to go through those bullshit things. And I guess when you go through it in your early stages of life, it just prepares you. Because when I used to get no's when I was to knock on doors, I didn't care. It never bothered me. I never was worried about rejection because my whole life I was rejected. My whole life I was picked on. I was bullied in, in, in school. So I was like, all right, this doesn't like, they're just going to say no to me. No problem. Let's go. So I, I, I think that, you know, you can become successful no matter what it is. It doesn't matter your background. It matters about what you want to accomplish, but it does help if you had some of those, you know, lessons, so to say, in your early childhood. Yeah, I, I agree. Do you think that at some point you had to develop some sort of a plan or was it just head first into whatever, you know, uh, idea you had? And just from there, it kind of led one thing led to another, or did you structure your life and say that this is where I'm going? And how did you go about doing that? Cause you great question. I mean, right now my life is very structured. I wake up at five, five 30 in the morning. I have a whole regimen till like nine, nine 30. I get all my habits, all my tasks done before nine, nine 30 in the morning. But that's not the case when I was, that wasn't the case when I was 18, 19 years old, right? My life was in chaos. I was lost. I had a low self-image. I didn't believe in myself. I had bad self-talk. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew what I didn't want. See, most people are are motivated and inspired by their dreams. I was motivated and inspired by my nightmares. Hmm. I knew what I didn't want. 
I knew I didn't want to live the life like my mom and my dad. I didn't want to beg people for money for my kids to go to school. I did not want to sit there and hope that we're going to eat steak once a year. Like we grew up, we never went to a restaurant. Like, have you ever been to a restaurant when you were a kid? Yeah. I never been to a restaurant like McDonald's, like we didn't go none of that stuff. Okay. We didn't go through any of those, like to go to a restaurant. Like now I eat out every single day. Like, it's just like, I guess to prove myself that I can do it. But when I was younger, I mean, we never went out. We never went out and it takes a toll on you as a kid, but you know, and, and, you know, I, I believe this is my, this is my, uh, uh, my beliefs, you know, my beliefs, you don't need a plan. You just need to create just action, action. You'll figure it out as you go. I didn't know what I was doing at 19, but I met a mentor that guided me because I was creating action because I was trying to do something running away from my nightmare. I bumped into somebody law of attraction kicked in. I bumped into someone that actually said, you know what? I'm going to bet on this horse. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't think anyone needs to really a plan at the beginning. Action cures anything. Action cures all diseases. And the person who's willing to go through the action is going to create a plan because eventually you're going to get tired of doing the wrong things. Yeah, 100%. So how, how did you, um, you, you, you mentioned you met a mentor. Was that what your first foot in the door to building a business? And how did yeah. you grow from there? Yeah. So at 19 years old, I bumped into a guy in a gym who had seven children. And he literally said, you know, he was offering me a business opportunity. He was just talking about business and my ears pricked up. Right. And I was looking for someone to kind of like learn about business entrepreneurship. At that time I was in college, which I don't know how I got into it, but that's another story. Cause I was kicked out of like so many schools, but I was like, wait a minute, business entrepreneurship. That's what I'm studying in school. Right. So I ended up like talking to him and kind of hitting him up. And he actually got me involved in a network marketing business at the time. And for the next five years, my life changed because I started to learn about Think and Grow Rich, you know, failing forward, all these different books, associating with the right people, having the right self-talk. Like I started, I used, I used to say F, 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 F every single sentence and I had no vocabulary. Like I couldn't even communicate with someone, right? I was just crazy, full of energy, just crazy. And he took me and tamed the beast a little bit and gave me direction and put me around a team of people that changed my life completely. And that's where it started to really get better. And the first couple of years, I didn't create a lot of success. All I created was changing my mindset. I didn't care about how much money I made. I cared about, am I changing as a person? Is Michael Barayev getting closer to becoming the 2.0 version of himself to become the next, you know, Michael Barayev, the real Michael Barayev, because the old Michael Barayev was just garbage, right? So that was the kind of stepping stones that started to create some, you know, some movement in my life. And as I started taking action, little by little, reading books, little by little, going through audiobooks, little by little, studying, learning, going to events, going to seminars, going to all these different places. I started to become a better me. And when I became a better me, opportunities had to flock into my way. Yeah. So what, what are the businesses that you have right now? And what's your role in each of those and yeah so basically i guess so let me kind of give you a background on what i actually did in the past couple of years so some, some of the audience can understand like i started in 2010 till 2015 i was a Volver network marketing business i was you know running around in the streets of the diamond district and 47th street you know selling gold diamond jewelry kind of like selling stuff figuring it out making some kind of income right uh wasn't making much right i collectively in the you know i probably made like 10 fifteen thousand dollars a year in 2010 11 12 13 14 i wasn't making much but I was learning a skill set, right? And uh, 2015, I got 2004, 2015, I started, you know, setting up table events with Spectrum, a big company in the Northeast selling TV and internet, okay? Did that for about 11 months and guess what? Just like I got kicked out of schools, I got fired, okay? I wasn't the greatest employee. So long story short, cause I just didn't, you know, I didn't like being told what to do. Long story short, I got fired the next day. I'm literally knocking on doors for another competitor, which was Verizon Fios at the time. And that kind of changed everything for me because I started to knock on doors in the cold, in the heat, in the projects, in the hood. It didn't matter. I just started going through a lot of action, a lot of no's and figuring myself out on how to create sales. And that year I hit my first six figures. And that's when my confidence flew through, through the roof because I was like, wow, if I can hit six figures now, I can hit seven figures. It was just a confidence builder for me. And 11 months later, the office kind of fell apart. I decided to open up my own business, which is we still have that company today, which is Barai Marketing. And now it's a little bit different. We used to, you know, knock on doors and we built it to 150 plus sales guys. We had, you know, multiple seven figures in profits, multiple seven figures in revenue. I mean, we created a very successful business and a successful organization. And that's what kind of blew me up in a sense because of all the work that I've been putting in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, making zero dollars at some points literally making less than 10, 15, $20,000 a year, studying and growing my mindset, everything just exploded, right? Um, and that's what we have right now. We have Brian Marketing, which is pretty much now we're focused on, you know, dealing with Fortune 500 companies and we do sales for them over the phone. 
Um, obviously, because you know now times are different. You can't really go knocking the doors as much as you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have our coaching company, which is now where I focus on coaching entrepreneurs and sales people how to close deals and how to get better at closing. Because that's what I really did. I took people that had no experience in sales and took them and took them and t- turned them into beasts. Right? Uh, no experience, Yale, jail, it don't matter. Right? As long as you have a desire to win and you're hungry and you want to learn how to close deals, whether or knocking through doors, business to business, phone calls, it don't matter. If you have the right attitude towards that, you know, I'll teach them. Um, and then we have our third company, which is the, the, the real estate investing company, which we just started. You know, all the money that I've been making, I've just been stacking it. You know what I mean? A lot of people, they're buying the Lambos, the Jets, the this, the that. There's a time and place for that. There's a time and place for that. I'm not flashy. The only expensive thing I wear is my nice little Rolex here. That's it. Like, I don't go crazy. I don't buy thousands of dollars of shirts. I don't care about that. I'm thinking about how do I buy assets? And then my assets will buy me all the fun shit. And that's the right mentality, right? Um, and it'll surprise people how much money I really have. I mean, people, most people that have no idea, like, oh, Michael, you can afford this. You should buy this. I'm like, you have no idea what the plan is. The plan is not to look rich. The plan is to be rich. All right. Right? And your, your pocket is called wealth podcast, right? Be wealthy. Like you have, in order to become wealthy, you need to have the right assets. Yeah. And I've learned that stocks to me is just too much of an up and down, right? It's just too volatile for me. I'm already emotional as it is. I don't like that. I want consistency. I want long-term. I don't mind waiting. And that's where real estate investing kicked in. And me and my two partners, we're pretty much heavily invested into that. Uh, and we're just, you know, buy our, you know, our first two, a uh, first one or two apartment buildings in the next you know couple of weeks. We're actually, uh, Speaking today, we're actually going to Fort Myers to look at a deal uh, oh, that we're about to close on. So in, in 2020, with all the unexpected things that have come up, has that shifted your perspective on uh, having more assets or have you always just had the, that game plan uh, from when you 20, started? Yeah, 2020 was just, it just exposed everybody. I give you an example. It's like going to the beach. We all go to the beach, right? Yeah. All of a sudden the waves disappear and then you see all your friends are butt naked. <laughs> well, what happened? The, they, they, no, they didn't expose themselves. They're already exposed as it is. The wave just went away. Now you see who's really screwed in, 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 in their ass, right? So to say. Yeah. So that's what happened in 2020. I was always aware that the, the, depending on social security or the government or, or a job, which is nothing wrong with that. Jobs are good, but depending on that as your only way to win, it's just not going to happen, right? It just, it, you got to learn and study about finances. Most students and most people are not kids are not, they're not studying this stuff. They don't even know what money is. Money is fake. Money is fiat. It's bullshit. It's not real. You want to buy gold. You want to buy assets, something that's real. Stocks are real as well, but also it's, it's manipulated by a lot of people and by a lot of institutions. So for me to invest in stocks, what am I going to do? Yeah, you can make money, but remember you're not chasing money. You're chasing wealth. It's a big difference. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's my mentality. And, you know, that's my opinion, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, especially now with all this money that's being printed, the value of the dollar is going Hell down. Yeah. So it's almost forcing us to invest in assets. I'm scared, bro. Like I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared because I have to invest fast. I have to take my money and invest it into things that are going to grow because if not, my money's going to get worthless soon. Yeah. And that's the position that I'm in. Cause I have to invest in it into assets like real estate, like gold, I don't know anything about Bitcoin, Schmitcoin, but that may be a good idea. I don't know. Right. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of ideas Having cash right now is crazy because it's losing value and you still do need it at some points to do certain things. But I mean, the way they're printing money is like, it's crazy right now. It's, it's really yeah. crazy. So you're pretty big in sales as far as uh, the company you've built and the work you've done. Do you think that everybody has some level of uh, sales skills uh, because you coach that or is that something that some people just don't have? Um, and how would you recommend somebody looking to go about getting into sales? Great question. I mean, I would say that everyone has sales in them. And I'll tell you why I've taken people that literally had no sales background. And I'm talking about, you look at them, you'll be like, no way he's selling. And they went out there. We taught them our system and we taught them how to sell door to door. And the quietest, shyest guy or gal would make more sales than the guy you would say, oh, that's the guy who's going to make a ton of sales. The loudest guy in the room. It's not about your personality. It's about the right mindset. It's about what you're saying to the customers. Sales is the flow of energy. How are your customers feeling? How are your vendors feeling, right? Like if you have the wrong energy, no one's going to sign up with you. I don't care how amazing your product is, okay? People got to feel you. People got to feel the vibe. Now you may get lucky, but sales is not about being lucky. Sales, in my opinion, is about being blessed and lucky, right? And in order to be blessed and lucky, which is what I call be lucky, you have to have the right mindset. God's not going to bless you with the success that you want if you're going to sit there and not study, 
God's not going to bless you if you don't have the right mindset. So in my opinion, anybody can learn sales and they have to really believe in them so they actually can because it just takes a little bit of a shift in mindset to learn how to close because everyone's closing deals, man. I don't care if you're a dentist, a chiropractor, a lawyer. I don't care if you're a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You're selling somebody something. Sales is about influencing someone to do something that they never thought of at that yeah. moment. You know, so I think everyone's in sales. It's just that some people are just really good at it and some people just suck and they just need to get better. Where do people go wrong? when selling something usually like what are the common mistakes you come across i would say the three big the two biggest mistakes i would say right the two biggest mistakes is they talk too much and they're not asking the right questions like right now this podcast i'm talking right now i'm not really learning as much you're learning a lot you're yeah. learning a lot about me the audience is learning about me i'm just kind of regurgitating information that's been here for a while right yeah so i'm not really learning you only learn when you shut up and you listen and not just listen to reply because a lot of people do that they listen as if they make pretend they're listening, but their mind is in la-la land. You understand? And yeah. they're literally on the beach right now with their cousin. And that's not how it works. You have to listen attentively. Pay attention. Effective listening is really listening to what they're saying in between the lines. When the customer says, uh, I don't really feel like doing this, instead of you saying, oh, they don't want to do it, you got to really understand why are they saying that? What's the cause of that? You know, why are they saying they don't want to feel like doing it? Maybe they don't trust me. Maybe they don't trust the product. Maybe they're concerned. Maybe they're worried. Maybe they're not sure about what the outcome is going to be. Maybe it's, you know, the, the worry about what I need to do next. So you need to feel that out and listen and pay attention. And, and, and the second part to that is most people don't ask the right questions. They don't ask the right questions. Like you're not asking the right questions to figure out where is this customer? You're so focused on selling your product. Like for example, you see this nice, beautiful mouse. They start regurgitating features about this stupid mouse. <laughs> And they don't talk about what the customer really wants. They have no idea if they really want a mouse or a keyboard. And that's the biggest mistake most you know, sales guys make. And that's when it comes to the ears and the talking. Uh, uh, and then the second thing is handling objections. Most people, they hear no and they go, oh. if somebody says I'm busy, they're like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, sir, for bothering you. They have no confidence in handling objections the right way. So those are the two biggest mistakes. And this is what we help our students with because most people get burnt knocking on doors out there. They get burnt on those phone calls. They mm -hmm. get crushed when somebody says, I can't do this. They get crushed when their, wife, when their customer says, I need to speak to my wife. And they have no idea what to say. So mm -hmm. we teach them how to overcome that so that they don't have to worry about that. And every single objection is going to help them get a close. Yeah. I, I like how you said that everyone in some facet is a salesperson, whether it's in your family or it's you know at work, because uh, learning sales and becoming better at it is something that can directly help anybody's life whether they're in sales or not so that's that's really cool um are, are you at this point selling as much as you were before or are you going more hands off and kind of playing quarterback with the businesses you're running and yeah so for, so you're always selling i mean i don't care if you're a ceo janitor you're always going to be selling i'm obviously more hands off in the in the in the bride marketing company uh, kind of less hands off because i have you know managers to run stuff and i got partners to run things for us and we got sales guys that are on the phones uh, but we're always selling, man. You're always going to be selling. Like when it comes to the real estate business, guess who's selling? Me. I'm selling the broker. I'm selling the landlord. I'm selling everybody that I'm the guy. Sell this product to me. I'm going to buy this property. I got to sell the bank. I got to sell the, the, the lawyer. I got to sell everybody, right? So sales is always going to be happening. But the, you know, the mundane sales and calling customers and what you're asking about, I don't do that anymore. I do it for my coaching. A little bit depends on the clients that come in. So if it's a great you know, application we look at and I like the application or if I have some time, like, you know what? Let me just serve, you know, serve somebody, add some value, see where they're at and I'll do that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's pretty sporadic. And I've kind of learned how to X myself out of, the, uh, out of the business because you don't want to be working in the business. You want to be working on the business. And that's the most you know, powerful thing in any company is you learning how to operate with systems and procedures and people to have your business growing without you physically putting all that effort. Yeah. I'm always so curious about uh, that phase of being an entrepreneur because you do something that you're passionate about and you love doing it. But then at a certain point when you grow to uh, you know, a certain level, you're not necessarily doing that anymore. You're managing the business that you created based off of that. So I don't know that always just yeah, a, lot, a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, I call them like a, you know, deli owner or, you know, salon, whatever they get into business because they're passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, man. I was never passionate about sales. Really? Okay. It just kind of fell into my lap. Yeah. Like I didn't think I, was, I never woke up saying I'm gonna be a sales guy. Like I had no idea. I just kind of fell into sales because I don't think anybody would hire me, and mm -hmm. I don't think I would have been a good employee. I just hated being told what to do. I hate having someone tell me you have to be here at nine o'clock. Like I just hate that. Like yeah. even when I was, I had one employee job, one W two job. 
right? Actually, I'm lying. I had a few of them when I was younger, but when I was in my 20s, I had one real job, which was the Spectrum company, right? Mm -hmm. My first day, I told I told the manager, listen, I don't do meetings. I don't care about your 12 o'clock meeting. I'm not showing up. Once a week, you want me to come by, say, what's up? Tell my tactics to the guys, no problem. But if you want me to come here every single day and do this rah-rah shit, I'm not coming in. And I got hired because I told him the truth. I mean, maybe that's why I got fired. I don't know. But I was like, I don't care if I have this job. I don't care if I get it. I just, I, I, I felt like I was doing them a favor. That, that was my mentality, which was wrong at the time, obviously. But that's my mentality when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, you know at that time. And I just, I just felt really confident that if I was going to work here, I'm going to bring a lot of value, which I did. But, you know, they didn't appreciate me. I didn't appreciate them, I guess. And, uh, you know, they said boots, you know, to me. And I ended up working for the competitor the next morning. So it was, it was pretty interesting, which yeah. obviously changed my life. I mean, thank God for that, you know? Yeah. It sounds like your, your mindset is the driving force behind a lot of what you do. How, how, do you, how have you shaped that mindset to be so positive and energetic all the time? I, mean, I follow you on Instagram. You're always in front of your phone encouraging people or you're telling people you know, to get moving and stay active. You're in the gym. How do you learn to do that? What, what, what's your method of training yourself to become that way? You got a great question. So it's, the mindset comes from a few areas, right? Number one is who are you hanging out with? My circle is very limited. I don't, I don't hang out. Let's go get drinks. Like everyone has this. Let's go get drinks. I don't drink. So I'm not wasting my time. Right. I don't, I don't waste time with a lot of these social things. Now I do network, but I don't want to waste my time. So a lot of times people hang out with the wrong crowd and whatever they're thinking is going to gravitate to your mindset. You understand? So if your buddy is broke and always talking about, I don't know, hanging out on the weekends and, and partying every weekend, well, guess what you're going to be doing? He's going to drag you into that mess. Nobody ever calls me and says, Michael, you want to go to the club? <laughs> I haven't had those calls in 10 plus years because they know my answer. No. <laughs> and because they know my answer very diligently and very like on, on, on point, they're not going to keep asking me. But some people say, Michael, I have so many friends from high school. Oh my God. They always invite me. Say no. Say, hey, I love you, but I'm focused on my dreams and my goals. I have a lot of nightmares. I don't want that life. I don't want to live broke. You're living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, you got a couple of thousand dollars saved up, but that's not wealth. I don't want that. I don't want what you got. I want what these guys got. I'm going to follow these guys. And these guys, they go to the gym. These guys, they do X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And you know what? They do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to do A, B, C plus X, Y, and Z just in case X, Y, Z doesn't work. And because you have this massive energy focused on what you want, there's no time for bullshit. You know, that's the first thing, the association. The second thing is the books, the mindset, the thoughts, where are they coming from? So I read a lot of books this year, this 2020, I read 60 books, Ooh. right? Last, the year before that, I read 56 books. The year before that, I read 54 books. So every year I'm trying to beat my record. Yeah. You understand? Week, it's yeah. just me versus me, man. It's me versus me. And this is how I am. This is not like me on some podcast popping along. This is who I am. I'm energetic 24-7. Before I go to bed, I'm like this. <laughs> like I'm just excited about life because I'm so pumped up about winning for me. Me versus me. I beat my, I have my own little targets. I'm playing a video game in real life. And when you have a, your life as a game and you're always trying to win to the next level, to the next level, be better and sharper and always level up, bro, you're always going to find energy. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to find energy. So the first thing is association. And the second thing is the books right? And the th third thing is the self-talk because all the information you're getting, you're going to speak it. And if you speak it to yourself the right way, look into the mirror. I do my self-talk audio every single day. It's about five minutes. I have it recorded. It's me talking to me about the things that I want that I, that I already have them in my possession. And I'm programming my mind that I am the best. I am energetic. I got my $100 million uh, a company. I do have my $300 million real estate portfolio. I have those things. And because I'm programming my mind every single day, I actually believe I'm worth it. And then God above me says, hey, you know what? You deserve it. Here, here you go. Here's an opportunity. For some reason, everything that I want comes to me somehow. It just, it just gravitates to me. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like in October, we met a group that we're doing a joint venture with for our real estate. I was literally talking for a few weeks with one of my partners. I was like, hey, we need to do a joint venture. We need to start building our real estate. Two weeks later, he brings me someone to my office. He's like, oh, looking for a joint venture. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Right? How am I my future wife, my, 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 my fiance, my girlfriend? How did I meet her? I literally said to God, I want a, I'm Jewish, by the way. I want a Dominican Jew. Now, just so you know, the percentage of Jews in the world is 0 0.001. And the percentage of Dominican Jews is 0 0.0000001 of that 0 0.01.
Well, but how the hell did I end up with a Dominican Jewish girlfriend? Uh, God and my spoken word. That's it. So mm. those three things, association, books, and the, and the spoken word and speaking what you want and self-talk, I mean, those things change everything for you, you know? And yeah. if you focus on that, the education constantly, right? Education. And when I say books, I'm not just saying just books, because I also listen to YouTube videos, podcasts, seminars, attending events, just getting myself immersed in the education and information and not just sitting there like this, but creating action with it, bro, your life is going to change. Yeah, that's that's super interesting what you were saying about the recording it and relaying it back to yourself. Uh, can you explain that a little bit? There's so many yeah. questions I want to ask you. You're saying all this great it, stuff. but So I read this book called by, by Shad Hempstead, right? It's uh, called uh, How to, uh, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. Okay. Great book. Right. And that book made it so simple for me to understand what went wrong in my early childhood. What went wrong in my life? Why did I have a life of turmoil, chaos, bullshit, drama, police, fighting, court systems, foster care? Why? The answer was very simple. I attracted it to my life with my spoken word. I remember when I was in eight, I'll give you a little story. And I was in sixth or seventh grade. I took a paper clip. Now you probably think I'm crazy for doing this. And I agree. I am. I take a paper clip. And I put it into the outlet where you do the, the, the light switch. And the whole school, the whole light, this gives you a reason why I got kicked out of schools. The whole freaking electricity, the power grid just blew up. It turned off. And guess who they're going to blame? Obviously me, because when there's a problem, where's Michael? And the principal, they expelled me for three days. But I remember before that happened, I walked into the bathroom and I looked up in the heaven. I was crying because I was so scared. I was in sixth, seventh grade. I'm like, God, why me? What's next? And guess what? Two days later, something bad happened. And I kept saying, what's next? Two days later, something bad happened. And I kept doing that for like a couple of weeks. I'm like, okay, God, I'm so sorry. Now, this may sound crazy to you, but I remember this as a kid, okay? And that book, when I read it, I'm like, now I understand. Everything you want in life comes through the way you speak to yourself. What you say to yourself is the most important thing on the planet. It doesn't matter what your cousin says or your mama says or your best friend says. It's what you say to yourself. Your self-image, the way you view yourself is what you think other people think of you. And the way you speak of yourself in your head dictates how you view yourself. Hmm. So it's very important to understand that self-talk is everything. 75% of the day, so they say, right, is you're talking to yourself. You're communicating in your head. I mean, you shouldn't be talking out loud because then we need to call a psychiatrist, right? Yeah. But most of the time you're talking in here. Right. So when you read that book, it just literally changed my life saying that everything you say creates highways in your head. And the more you ingrain it, the more you speak it, the more you speak it, the more you speak it. Number one, it's the spoken word and God's going to bless you. But number two, it's like you telling yourself these facts, you start to believe it. Yeah. And the movie to watch that will help you out with that is Inception. That also helps. Because you can incept the thoughts so deep in your head that you actually start believing it. I believe at a young age, at 19, 20, 21, that I'm worth more than a million bucks. And I became worth over a million bucks at 26 years old. Yeah. I believe that I was going to hit a million dollars in revenue profit in my pocket. And guess what? That's how it happened. All because of the self-talk. Oh, and obviously, listen, you can't just sit there and do this. You got to go create some action. But yeah. that's the beginning stuff so to start believing. Because if you don't believe you can make 100K or 250 or a milli or 2 milli or whatever your goal is, you're, you're never going to have You're never going to have it. Mm -hmm. And the first step is to talk to yourself and to ingrain that, that highway in your head so you can actually get there. Once you believe, game over, man. Your action level will change completely. But a lot of times we don't create action because we don't believe. Yeah, that's awesome. I 100% agree. And um, even hearing you talk, dude, it gets me pumped up. But uh, what was that book called? One more time. Uh, Shad, uh, the Shad Hempstedler, I think. Okay. As an author, what to say when you talk to yourself. Yeah. Awesome. I have it somewhere here in my bookshelf. Is that kind of going off of the law of attraction? I've noticed you talked about that a lot. Is that it, similar? It, it's kind of. I mean, listen, all that stuff may sound like hocus pocus to many people. I don't like focus my whole day on it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it. It is. It is true. It is truth. But I just live my life with action. The law yeah. of action supersedes everything. Because the way you think about life is thoughts lead to words, words lead to actions, right? Actions lead to your habits. Your habits determine your character. Your character determines your destiny. If you work backwards, the most powerful one of them all is action. Because action will always kill and trump words. And your words will always trump a negative thought or a positive thought, right? So for example, if you have negative thoughts, speak out loud of what you actually want. Speak the positive, the positive thought. Yeah. If you have... 
if you want to, you know, really overcome the, all, all, you know, the words and the thoughts, create action. Action always kills everything. Action creates more belief than anything. When you're scared and you jump out of that plane, which I'm hoping to do this year, I want to jump out of a parachute. I want to do this. I never did it, right? Yeah. But when you jump, they say when you jump, like you let go of the fear. It's before the, before the jump is where all the fear kicks in. But once you create action, boom, you're done. So action is everything. Mm -hmm. So as, as far as channeling all that energy and passion into your day, how do you go about structuring a, a productive work day? Yeah. You go to the gym, you go to your office. Like, how do you structure that? Do you have Great a question. So, yeah, so before, for the past couple of months, what I've been doing is I have a structure, right? So I have, I have like 10, 10 habits that I need to accomplish. So I have my little checklist, right? And before this, it was kind of done in a sporadic day. So kind of like while I was doing this, I would do the audiobooks. While I was driving, so to say, I would read, you know, listen to the audiobook. Um, while I would be, you know, in the gym, I'll listen to a podcast or a YouTube video, right? Yep. Uh, and that's how I kind of structured my day. Wherever it fit, I focused on the business activities, focused on that, and I worked my, my personal stuff around that. What I started doing lately is I started waking up 5, 5, 30 in the morning. Now, I used to hear this. This is the reason why I didn't do it before. I used to hear like on videos and podcasts, you probably did as well. If you wake, if you want to be successful, you have to wake up early. The early bird catches the worm. I'm like, fuck the bird, start my language. I said, fuck the bird and fuck the worm. I don't want the worm, okay? So I went against the grain and I said, I'm going to prove everybody that I'm going to wake up late and still become rich. So the, the answer is very simple. Can you wake up later in the day and still become successful? Yes. <laughs> Can you? Yes. But is it more effective to wake up early? 100%. And I started to do this a couple of months ago. It changed everything for me, right? And I had actually just uh, uh, put out a, uh, 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 an audio podcast a couple of days ago on the five reasons why waking up early will change your life. But these are some of the habits that I have in the morning and I write them down. So the first thing I do when I wake up, vitamins and protein at 5, 5, in the morning, right? Then I go, then I do my goals. Then I pray to God, okay? This takes about till six o'clock in the morning. From six to seven, I'm in the gym. While I'm in the gym, I'm listening to a YouTube, a podcast, something that's business related. Now, some people need to listen to music. God bless you. Do what you got to do. This is what I do. I like to put education into my head for that, for the next hour at seven, seven 15. I'm walking back to the, I'm walking back from the gym while I'm doing that, getting my, my protein shake, whatever. I'm listening to my self-talk audio that we just talked about. Okay. Then I take my bike. I go biking around the neighborhood. I'm in Miami, by the way. So it's like 70 degrees all the time. I bike around the ocean front. I put on my audiobook. So boom, I'm done. I get back. I eat. I shower. It's already 8.30. I read my book. It's 9 o'clock. So by 9 a.m., I did all this education, all this mental growth, all this emotional and spiritual growth, and most people are just cracking out their, their first eyeball. Yeah. So it's 9 o'clock right now. And then, then 9 o'clock, my day starts all the way up till 9 o'clock at night. I'm working, doing meetings, Zoom calls, whatever it may be. And then nine to 10 o'clock, I usually, that's the unwind time, 10 o'clock, I'm knocked out. And that's my schedule, right? Yeah. Obviously in between, if I need to spend time with my girl, go to the grocery store, whatever it needs to get done, but I'm very productive with my time. But the 5.30 to nine o'clock, nobody bothers me. Mm -hmm. Nobody, like I don't care who's calling me, I don't give a crap. I'm focused on me, it's me time. Me to get me better so that I can go serve the world with my videos, serve the world with my coaching, serve the world with podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the, um, that schedule that I find that fits my life as well. Um, you know, if that, that first, whatever, four or five hours in the morning, you, you, the rest of the day just feels so much better than even if you have to go and get to work at that time. I always like to schedule my, my, my work stuff. I'm a, a flight instructor at a school. So, um, that's, that's what I do, but I like to do that stuff Amazing. later in the day so I can keep the, you know, the stuff that I, that I you know, the praying, the, you know, studying that kind of stuff in the morning, that just feels the best to me. You know, no one's going to be up. You're, sharp. talking You're to sharper me. in the morning. Also, you know, I try to listen. I used to go to the gym at 10 o'clock at night. I used to go to the gym at one o'clock in the morning throughout the past 10 years. I mean, I've done many different changes and I found that this change is more, it's more disciplined. And you know, it's crazy. You know, why I started doing this because I didn't want to do it. I just mm -hmm. talked about it with some of my guys today. I did not want to wake up at five 30 and I was like, wait a minute, because I don't want to, like I had a battle in my head. Michael, you don't want to do this. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, hold on a second. You don't want to, you got to do it now because mm -hmm. that's discipline. You got to, discipline is not doing things when it's convenient. Discipline is doing things when you don't want to do it, but you know, you got to do it, but you do it anyway. Yeah. That's discipline. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to do it. Fuck it. I'm doing it tomorrow. My girl said, you're crazy. I said, perfect. She's like, you're not going to, it's not going to last a week. I said, really? <laughs> 
perfect. Two months in, three months in, what's up? Yeah, That's the mentality. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm driven. I don't know if you, if you study Patrick, but David, he has like, uh, uh, um, there's four different ways people are driven by. I'm, I'm the mad guy. I'm, I'm, I'm fueled by competition, opposition. Tell me no, and I'll prove you wrong. That's the kind of mentality I am. I don't know why I'm crazy, but that's, you know, that's how I am. That works. She kind of told me I wasn't going to do it for more than a week and then boom, bro, I'm doing it for two, three months. That's, that's so cool. Um, yeah, I, I agree. That's seems like the best way to be for an entrepreneur as well. That competitive edge. Cause you know, you can be in against other people or you can be in against yourself and just that, uh, driving. Yeah. And what you just said, when you, the competition part, I don't compete with anybody, man. Right. It's just you. <laughs> I can care. When I say comp competitive, I'm competitive with me. The best yeah. person to compete with is with yourself. Because when you start competing with somebody else, you're comparing your worst to their best. Mm -hmm. I compete between me and me. You versus you, baby. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, as far as what you've done at this point, it seems like it's all been, the trajectory has been upwards, but I, I can imagine there hasn't been bumps in the road. How, how do you go about... Uh, navigating through failure or what, what are some setbacks you've had even after you've made it in a sense? I haven't made shit in the sense of that, obviously, because there's always room to grow and there's always next level, next level, next level. Okay. But 80% of my life is filled with failure. 20% is filled with a little bit of some success. And that's part of the game, right? You're going to get smacked. You're going to get rejected. I mean, throughout building my company, there was a lot of failure, a lot of mistakes, a lot of dumb decisions, right? Even the, even today, I mean, how many mistakes have you made today? Probably a ton. I made yeah. some mistakes. We all make mistakes. And most people are afraid of making mistakes, which is they have this paralysis of analysis. They want to know everything before they make action. And I've learned that you just got to create action. Go with it. You'll figure it out. God cannot steer a parked car. You got to move. Create some action. Do you have a higher risk of getting to an accident if you're driving on the highway? Yeah. But do you have a higher chance of getting where you want to go versus you sitting there in your parked car hoping to get somewhere? Yeah. Right. So failure is part of the game. I made a ton of mistakes and I don't look at my mistakes as, oh my God, I'm a loser. Nope. Great. Awesome. What can I learn from that? Uh-huh. Mm, don't do that next time. Mm, okay. I don't take it personally. I'm like, all right, don't do this again. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I keep doing the same thing over and over again and I keep saying, I'm a moron, you know, that's stupid. But I try to learn from those mistakes and I try to make the, I don't, I don't make the same mistakes over and over again. Um, I mean, we probably made those mistakes, obviously, but I try not to make the same mistakes as many times as, you know, as, as I do it. So that's really how I look at failure and a good book to read is failing forward by John Maxwell. It'll change your life and it'll teach you like mistakes is part of the game. You cannot build anything. You cannot do anything unless you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, as far as your investments so far, because it, from what it seems like you've built up a business and now you're kind of taking a step back and investing more to be able to grow even further. At, at what point do you recommend someone should start taking capital that they're making from their business or money that they're making from their job and invest it in things like real estate versus putting it back into their business? Great question. So from zero to hundred K, the first step you got to learn is how to make hundred K. That's the first step. It's a confidence builder. How do you make hundred K in a year? Right? Most people have no idea that hundred K a year is two K a week. They have no idea. They don't do the math. They don't do the math. They have no idea. Oh, hundred K. Oh. If you really think about it, $2,000 a week is not a big deal. If you're making a thousand bucks a week right now, how do you make 2000? What can you do in your job to add more value, to bring more revenue to the company where they can give you a piece of that, right? That's what you got to think. So the first step is to make a hundred. The second step is to stack a hundred. You should not be investing in anything but yourself, in your mindset, in your coach, spend money on coaches, mentors, books, audiobooks, events, seminars, up until you have a hundred thousand dollars saved up. If you don't have a hundred thousand dollars saved up, you should not be investing in anything but those things I just uh, spoke about. Once you have a hundred K, because remember, once you invest into a coach, a mentor, a guide, YouTube, whatever it is to me, books, audiobooks, investments, seminars, all that stuff, invest in yourself. Your brain is going to get to the next level. So you can now learn how to get more money into your, into your, into your pathway, right? So you need the right mindset. Once you have a hundred K stacked up, now you can focus on real estate, stocks, bonds, whatever you want, whatever you know more about. And I don't recommend you just throwing your money aimlessly. Study. For the past three and a half, four years, guess what I've been studying? Real estate. Mm -hmm. I haven't bought one deal, but all I've been doing is studying and absorbing real estate content. I went for free. I paid. I went through boot camps. I've been through events. I've been through virtual boot camps. I've done so much information that now I'm ready to go bam and buy whatever I need to buy because I have all that information throughout that process. Now, you know, you don't have to take three, four years. I just 
to chose to take three or four years, you could take five years, you could take five months. It depends on you how fast you're willing to learn and then take that money and invest it into your, you know, to your endeavors. Mm -hmm. Is real estate your primary uh, source of investment right now or have you yeah. been diverse? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm focused on real estate and the reason why that I don't like, like I said, stocks, bonds and stuff like that is because it's too volatile, man. It's too like up and down. It's, uh, you got to keep your eye on it. Like it's just too scary for me. A kind of guy like me now is it, can you make money there? Absolutely. Right. You can make money in anything. You can make money selling snicker bars. You can do whatever you want. Just for me, long-term generationally, like I want to pass generational wealth. I know for a fact that real estate is like real. It's actual like there. I can see it. I can touch it. I can feel it. And it's always been a dream of mine to own buildings. Like since I was a kid growing up in a one bedroom apartment with five of us, and I never had my own room that pissed me off. Now I live in Florida. I have my, uh, you know, 1800 square foot apartment. I have two bedrooms, like, and I have a great view. Like to me that like would have never, ever happened. Like I lived so poor. I didn't have my own room like that. I, I, I slept in my car in 19. Like that's how busted I was. And I'm not any better than anybody. It just shows you that a guy like me, a schmuck like me can do it. Anybody can do it. You just gotta want it bad enough. You just gotta have, you have to hate your nightmare so much you don't have to run away from it. And when you have that burning desire, like you talked about a thick and grow rich, when you have a burning desire, everything changes. And I didn't understand that at 18, 19. Once it was 2021 20, and I understood burning desire, my life changed, man. My life changed. So real estate is what I actually passionately love because it's just so many different, you know, you, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, tax, tax advantages, you know, there's, uh, uh, like I said, it's a real asset, the depreciation on, on the taxes, appreciation, uh, you know, it just, it just, there's so many other cool things about a cash flow. Like there's so many beautiful things about real estate that I like better than stocks that, you know, I chose real estate. Now, if you like stocks, like I said, God bless. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, it, it, if someone is stuck in a nine to five and they have a desire, but they're not really sure where to go with it, how, how would you give advice to someone about, uh, you know, changing from going in the normal nine to five to branching off to being uh, self-sustainable? Great question. So most people are focused on nine to five. What they should be focused on is what they're doing from five to nine. Yeah. What are you doing from nine to five? Work, hustle, make that business grow. Put all your energy to it. Grow that company. Be the best version you can be. And then from five to nine, what are you doing? Most people, Netflix and chill. Most people, let's grab some food. Most people, let's go drink some beer. Let's get some drinks. That's bullshit. Five to nine, you know what I was doing? I was at meetings. I was in events. I was at seminars. I was reading. I was studying. I didn't have a, people say, oh, Michael, you missed out on all the fun. No, let's go have fun right now. <laughs> let's go. Let's go on a month vacation. Let's go. I can work. I can work from anywhere in the world. I got a computer, baby. I can take two weeks off. I don't have to ask anybody permission to do whatever the fuck I want. All because I discipline myself to not have the fun, which was the short-term fun. Sacrifice the short-term fun for the long-term fun. And if you can do that, you'll become successful. Yeah. That seems like the characteristic that all the, the most prolifically successful people in the world, the, the Elon Musk, they, yeah, they're always looking way in advance. And um, yeah, that's uh, most people want it right now. Like right now, I'm 29 years old, right? I thought about being 30 10 years ago, five years ago. At 25, I was like, okay, I'm going to be 30. I swear to God, I was sitting down and I had this moment. Okay, I want to be 30 in five years. What do I want to do so that by 30, I'm taking care of? I need to do this, 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 this. I, right, you know what? I'm suffering for the next couple of years. Right now, I'm thinking about 34, 35, 36. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have little rascals running around. How do I want to live? Do I want to consume with business and running around? No. I want to have my real estate portfolio growing. I want to have my companies growing without me physically there. I'll, I'll make less money because I'll get more, you know, more equity to the partners and whoever. But I want to control my life and have more freedom, more time to do the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to probably work till the day I die, but I want to work on my terms, the way I want to work. I want to work at home, spend time with my kids. If somebody wants my time, We'll do it through Zoom or whatever the case may be. Like, mm -hmm. that's the way I envision my 34, 35 result. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking about what I'm doing today, sacrificing the time, the energy, the resources now, so I can live great in the next four or five years. And that's how you got to think. Think ahead. Don't be stupid. Yeah. It, it seems like almost an illusion that people have that going out and getting drinks and wasting their time, in a sense, is more uh, gratifying than if you are working towards something and seeing yourself get closer to it. Because, you know, you say you're suffering, which, you know, it's hard work. So there's that sense of it. But also when you see yourself get closer to a goal and get to a goal, that's to me, that's better than, you know, like when I say Friday. suffering, I'm like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? It's not <laughs> suffering. You're just not having fun. I mean, it's okay. I'm not yeah. saying you don't have to have fun the whole time. I'm a weird case, bro. Like I don't, have, I don't like, if you said Michael was going to boat 
and let's hang out or like, let me do a Zoom call. I'll probably do a Zoom call. I, I, I'm just crazy. And I won't even do it for the money. I just, I just, I enjoyed this. I can do this all day long, right? This is what I love to do. I love giving back. Boat, eh, we'll do it here and there. I love boating. Why not? Right? I'll do scuba diving. I love shooting guns. Like those are things I love to do. You know, I love it, but I don't love it to the point where I can do it for 24 seven. Right. So I just have a different mentality. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm the weird one. Maybe something's wrong with me. I don't know. That's why I don't put my ideas on people because that's my life. Me versus me once again. And I don't want to convince anyone to live my lifestyle because it's not, it doesn't sound fun, mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that my kids are going to thank me. Like you see this little pit painting over here. Yeah. I'm going to have a big ass painting. My dream is to have a big ass painting of me with the eyes like this. So my kids can always see me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I die. You know what I'm talking, right? There's more yeah. Lisa picture the eyes moving. Yep. 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 Hope they have me there. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, you're definitely an example, I think, for anybody, whether they're not trying to live that all the time lifestyle, just, you know, the positivity and the energy you put out there. I think uh, even taking the time to talk to me on this small YouTube channel right now, but hopefully give a shit. it'll keep Bro, going. I you know, it's crazy. I don't care. I mean, you got one one viewer. Awesome. Because that one viewer could have been me. Mm -hmm. That one viewer could have been me desperately looking for some information for someone to be mentored by. I could be your virtual mentor. I don't mind. Like, think about that. Go on my videos. Watch all my, I have like a hundred plus videos on YouTube. I got so many videos on Instagram. It's crazy. And it's not just bullshit. It's actual real information. You could just take that. I've learned. I've formulated into a thought like a one minute video. You can take it and go act on it. And you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be the guy for someone like me who was 19 years old, confused, lost, had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was just looking for someone. I got lucky that I bumped into somebody, but not many get that lucky. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. why I don't care how many viewers you have. I, I hope you grow this thing to a million viewers. God bless. But it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. To me, it's about the future, about that one individual. That one individual gets inspired. God bless. That's awesome, man. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. A few more questions I wanted to ask you about. Perfect. You're you're really active on social media. I see you you post video clips all the time. Um, you are doing sponsored ads. That's kind of how I ran into you. How do you go about marketing your business and yourself? And what's the purpose behind that? Is it just to get more eyes to see your content? Are you trying to provide value? What what's behind the marketing? Great question. So back in 2014, 15, I started doing my first couple of videos. And, uh, you know, I was reading maybe, I think it was jab, 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 right? I don't remember what book I was reading, but they just said add value, add value, right? Serving leadership. Like you can't change your life until you change other people's lives. I'm like, all right, well, I'm good at talking. I'm good at sales. Let me know, just start painting videos, motivational videos that started off as, right? I got all this energy. I'm always excited. I'm always pumped up. I'm a little bit odd. So I'm different. People want to see that. Okay, great. Started making a video, one viewer, 10 viewers, 20 viewers, whatever. And I got one video that had like 10,000 views. I was like, wait a minute. If 10,000 people liked my shit, let me just keep doing this. I don't have to make money from it. I'll just do it just to add value. Like, why not? So I started doing it. And it just ended up being like a consistent habit of mine. And I'm very kind of like very disciplined. So like if I start one habit, I just keep going. Like I've been going to the gym for 12 plus years. Like I'm just going and going. I don't take days off. I'm just going. Like I'm just like a hammer. You just keep fucking banging on. That's it. Let's go, baby. So that's what ended up happening. I have never stopped. And throughout that process, I mean, it helped. It, did it help me? Absolutely. It helped me with recruiting help me with networking, help me with everything, just exposing myself. And I just, and obviously I've learned that without attention, there is no business. So money follows attention. And I didn't realize that, but it, that's, what, that's what ended up happening. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm glad that I did it. And now, obviously now I have a real reason of why I want to add content, because if I want to really mentor and coach other people, they have to know who the hell I am. They want to know the real me. And a lot of times when you go on Instagram, anybody can do this. Here's my Lambo, but that doesn't mean shit. It's about that, about the Lambo. I can check, what is the watch gonna do? Like, okay, great, it's a nice watch. What does that do for me as the viewer, right? So adding value and content that inspires people and gives them good tips to act upon, that's gonna make them say, you know what, I like this guy. Or you know what, I hate this guy. And I don't care which one it is, hate me or like me, either way, you're gonna know me. That's the mentality. Yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a good way to be because ultimately, you know, if you're looking to give yourself um, you know, content or, you know, uh, value by doing it, you're not probably not going to get it. But since you're giving back so much, you know, law of attraction, whatever you want to call it, kind of works its way around full circle. Um, so very good. Uh, okay, last couple things. My, here. My, just to end on that, my goal is to get a million followers on YouTube, million followers on TikTok, million followers on Instagram, and I'm going to do it. 
I don't know how, who, where, what is going to happen though. You know what I mean? And by doing this, by adding value, maybe somebody's going to see it. That's one new follower today. That's one new viewer, one new impact, one new soul that's life is going to, that his life is going to change by watching maybe one minute or one video or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the mindset. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So on Instagram, I had that little whoops, questionnaire thing. Um, so let me double check to see if you don't mind answering some questions. No, no, go ahead, bro. Cool. All right. Looks like I got one here from Jalen Prophet. Uh, you might What's have Jalen Prophet. <laughs> you might have already answered this a little bit. It says, when did you start uh, getting into real estate, and how long did it take to get to the level you're at? Great question. So I'm in the beginning stages of my real estate investing career. So for the past three and a half, four years, what I've been doing, like I said, I have been studying real estate. I've been educating myself, learning you know, uh, just, just taking a ton of information, going to boot camps, books, all kinds of stuff. Right. So when you get about to like 40, 50, 60% of information, now it's time to go all in. There's no more risk. Now that 30, 40% of what you don't know, you'll figure out as you go on. So that's what happened in October, November of this past 2020. I decided to just start creating action, right. Cause I was just educating for the past couple of years. And in uh, October, we decided to joint venture with a team. And now we're actually, you know, we've been diligently looking at deals. And now we're about to close on one or two properties. We don't know which one is going to be yet. We're still looking at, I'm going to Fort Myers actually on Tuesday next week. Like I'm looking at a property, vetting it, due diligence, whatever it may be to actually bang it on it and, and buy that 24 unit property. And uh, that'll be my first property. Uh, but the goal this year is to have hundred units. And my ultimate goal is to have a $300 million, you know, uh, in, 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 you know uh, portfolio with, 300 million of it being my equity, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I want. That's my goal. That's my target. I already know how I can do it. I have a plan. I mean, no one's going to really know how and where and what, but by 2025, that's my goal. That's awesome. I mean, I certainly believe you'll, you'll get there. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, last couple of questions here. You've already mentioned a few. What's a book you would recommend to anybody looking to start a business, grow as an entrepreneur, <sighs> develop themselves? If you could give so many one. good ones, man. <laughs> so many good ones, bro. Just this year, I read 60 books and like 40 of them were amazing. Um, a good book. Whew. It's like saying, who do you love more, your mom or your girlfriend or your brothers? <laughs> um, I would say a good book. That's really, you know what? I got three top books that really changed my life, right? Three big ones, right? Perfect. Uh, damn, so many. For me, because I, I used to be so afraid of making mistakes. I would say failing forward, think and grow rich. And magic of thinking big. Awesome. Yeah. And nah, what I, the reason I'm asking you a question, I ask everybody you have on the podcast. I got a website, getwealthpodcast.com, and I'm making a list of all the books that people recommend. So I'll put all of them on there. Yeah. That's awesome. Put, put, actually, put another one. This one, this okay. one's good. How to okay. win friends and influence people. Got it. I've heard of that one. I've oh, that, that book changed my life. Yeah. It's a, it's a classic. I mean, the book that I read was probably when I was in school, How to Take People Off and Make People Hate You. <laughs> <laughs> when I read that book, I was like, holy shit, I need to learn. Yeah. But it was a good book. Awesome. I appreciate Thanks. Brennan for, you know, taking the time and asking me a bunch of questions. Hopefully the viewers will get inspired. Uh, you guys can follow me on, you know, Michael Barayev, which is M-I-C-H-A-E-L underscore B-R-A-Y-E-V on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, and YouTube, obviously as well, with my full name, Michael Barayev. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate you coming on. I think anybody that listened to this is better off than they were before. And um, I'm certainly inspired and motivated when I when I hear people like you and, you know, hear all that. Pause. Oh, sorry, did you hear people that? People like us. All right, people like us. Yeah, I got to shift that, that way of thinking right there. Um, so yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. I'm, um, thanks for coming on. And I'll, I'm excited to watch you grow and see what happens. So appreciate you, man. Thank you. Alrighty. Get wealthy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>